all SCADA systems are client server. The polling engine is the server, right? So the client, the HMI, asks the polling engine for data, and the polling engine goes out and gets it if it's a demand request. Otherwise, the server is asking, you know, the polling server is asking for the data and bringing it up and storing it in the HMI. So at its very simplest level, a, all SCADA systems, you know, at their simplest level are what we would call a central master, meaning one polling server and one HMI package sitting on top of it. Could be more than one console, but one polling server. Okay, so that would be a central master. The next kind of system would be what would be called a distributed system or a peer-to-peer. Signet -peer. is a distributed system or a peer-to-peer -peer because I can have its polling server in multiple locations throughout my business and any of the HMIs have connectivity can see any one of those polling servers, you know, provided I have login credentials and capability. So Signet's real popular in production facilities for that reason because I can run it in the field and yet glue it together at the enterprise level. The next kind of SCADA system is what I would call a master submaster. So what, what this is, and you, you don't tend to see these in the US very much, they're fairly common internationally where you have big state-owned companies where this would be the control system for um, a gas utility, a, city ga a set of city gates around a community. And this would be the interstate transmission pipeline control system. And it's polling these guys, rather than polling the devices, it's polling the servers that are polling the devices. So I'm rolling it up. So it's a master submaster. This approach can be effective. And I actually think that it's, a, it's an approach that's gonna make sense going forward. One of the challenges we often have in this is I might have a SCADA implementation at a compressor station, but when I go to the main control room, the pipeline control center, the only thing I know about that compressor station is suction pressure, dispre discharge pressure, flow through the station, and run status of the compressor. I don't have any of the detailed information available to me in the control center. If I do a master submaster, depending on the tools I pick and how I deploy them, I ought to be able to get to all that detail, rich data from the control center. The other thing is, what are we all interested in right now if we're working for an oil and gas company? Saving money. How are we saving money? We're trying to do more with fewer people, right? So if I've got 24 seven operations here and 24 seven operations here and 24 seven operations here, if I can take those two submasters and make them eight to five during the day when the workload's high and do everything else from the main control center at night and on the weekends, then I can radically shift my operating costs. So there's some value in this kind of approach if you can find the, the right tools and make it work. All right, so polling module. It's one of the most critical pieces of the system. Uh, it needs to be able to handle multiple protocols it's got to support multiple media, and it needs to support primary polling path and secondary polling path if the primary path fails. Um, it's got to handle network protocols uh, and encapsulation where I'm taking Modbus and putting it inside of a TCP, and I've got to support backup. The real-time data engine, it's where, as I mentioned, is I, I got an image of the real-time data. It's where I'll feed other applications that need to see real-time data. Generally, in the real-time database, they run that application in the RAM on the server. So it's fast, right? Um, so that it, it needs to be high performance. Ideally, it's going to be able, you're going to be able to back it up, and you're going to be able to back it up without taking it offline. And it should support redundancy as well. You also have the historical data engine. Uh, the big thing about the historical data engine is it's constrained mostly by disk volume, how much data I keep. So it needs to have algorithms for data reduction so I can set dead bands. And you know, if for the last six months, I wanna see data every five minutes, but 
everything that's older than five years, I just want to see a daily, a daily number, right? That, that kind of thing. Could be redundant. Most people want them to be redundant as part of the overall system. Uh, people that operate these pipelines and other systems they're controlling, they're very interested in the trends. The trends are very important to how they keep, how they do their analysis and understand what's going on at a detail level. Um, we also need alarming. So in the alarming, uh, one of the new requirements in the regulatory requirements, I've got to do alarm management. To do alarm management, I've got to be able to route, set priorities. I need to acknowledge them. I've got to log all that out. Uh, I need to filter so that only the alarms for this console go to this console and only the alarms for this console go to the other console. And I need to be able to get alarms by operating context. So if I've got 15 alarms at a site, tell me what's the highest priority alarm at that site. That kind of thing. And the business end, if, if you go to a gas control professional and you say we're going to do a new SCADA system, their questions are all going to be about what can I do with the trends? That's what they care about. They want to be able to build their own. They want to be able to save them. They want multiple pins, all that kind of stuff. And as I mentioned, that's kind of the business end of a SCADA system for the people that are actually operating assets. Um, you also want reports. You also need a full audit trail. If you're running a piece, if you're running a critical system and you have an incident, the accident investigators are going to want to see your audit trail. What, just note to self, if I'm in a regulated control room, I do not want to do any logins that are console one, console two. It needs to be Joe Blow console one, Jack Smith console two. Because the auditors, if there's ever an incident, are going to want to know who was on the desk, what were they doing, what was their workload? How were they qualified? And then, of course, a um, lot of need for displays. Um, in the high-performance HMI, and there's some good resources out there about this, less is more. Most of the most HMIs built for process control have too much data or the wrong data or the data presented the wrong way. So what you really got to do if you're going to do these HMIs well is you've got to focus on what do they need to operate. And there's, what do I need to understand what's going on, and then what do I need to dig down and do analysis? Like I, got to, I got to keep aware at any given moment, is the process I'm responsible for normal or abnormal? As a matter of form, if I click on something, I don't want it to pop up in a dialogue and cover something else up. Because if I do that, I could have something alarm or go out of whack and I can't see it. I also want to do what's called select before operate, which means I want to control this flow controller to 100 M a day. Click. You want to control this controller to 100 M a day, correct? Yes, click. That's select before operate. In other words, verify before you write. Um, there are a lot of cool tools that some of these SCADA vendors are putting in, like pan and zoom and zoom in, zoom out, and built-in maps, and all that stuff's nonsense. Maps are better in a GIS system. They're not better in a, in a SCADA system. What a SCADA controller needs is an overview perspective, and they don't really care geographically if it's north or south. What they care about is it upstream or downstream. So when we build screens, everything to the extent we can is left to right, like I read a book. Uh, you do want to do vector graphics and vector text. Um, basically, you want, you want screens to be able to scale well to other platforms. So if I have casual users that are using smart devices or whatever, I want these screens to size appropriately. All right, so let me just, uh, we'll just take a couple of minutes and see if anybody has any questions you'd like to ask about all this. So let me ask, was this helpful? Was this useful? Yes. Okay, good, good, great.